So during your project, you may need to cut a small narrow strip off the edge of the slab to allow you to pave up to a house or a drainage channel. Now, whilst the petrol saw is a great bit of kit for cutting porcelain paving, it will create excessive vibration and that will cause the slab to splinter and fracture. So what I recommend is the use of the four inch electric grinder or a table saw, bench saw, both with the uh, porcelain blade fitted. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark 40 mil on this slab. I'm gonna show you how to cut that off using both of these pieces of kit. When using any powered cutting equipment, there is an element of risk. Therefore, it's essential that the safety equipment is used. Safety boots, protective glasses or goggles, gloves, ear protection, and finally, a dust mask, which must be FFP3 grade. It's important to look after the condition of any cutting blade and by using one of these cleaning blocks or you can even use an offcut of natural sandstone paving all you need to do is run the blade into the block which will clean the blade of any debris and will give you perfect cuts every time. This how to cut pavestone porcelain video will show how to cut a 40mm strip of the 1m edge using a bridge saw, otherwise known as a table saw. I like to score the measurement line every time I do a cut, although most table saws have a bar along the end with measurements on so that you can place the slab on exactly the right measurement that you need to cut off. This saw has a clamp that I'm holding with my left hand. It's there to hold the slab firmly on the table bed and reduces the vibration of the slab. Once I've scored the cutting line, I just slowly pull the blade through the slab each time, allowing it to sink further into the slab and letting the blade do all of the work. On this particular product, it will take four or five passes to complete the cut. As with all porcelain cutting, you should never rush the process as this may cause the slab to crack or break, but rushing can also put unnecessary stress on the motor and on the blade. Notice how I lift the blade out each time I go back to the start. You should never pass the blade back through the cut line as you may snag the blade by going against the direction of the motor. This has resulted in damaged product to some installers. You will see on the third pass that I allow the blade to cut right through the slab on each end to relieve the tension. I also recommend that after every cut the bed is cleaned down using a soft brush or a sponge to make sure there are no small pieces of paving left from previous cuts. Any debris left on the table will make the contact between the slab and the bed uneven and it could cause the slab to vibrate. Sticking with the cleaning down topic, it's a really good idea to change the water in the reservoir regularly, depending on how many cuts you do a day. The dust that forms in the water will clog the blade up and reduce its performance. This should be the fifth and final pass of the blade and the cut will be complete. On this saw you will see there is a side extension table. This is to support the whole slab which is essential. When any part of a slab is unsupported it can cause it to shatter or crack due to the vibration. Some installers even try to get a colleague to hold the overhanging slab. This is not only unsafe it often leads to the paving cracking. 
you will notice that around three quarters of the way through the cut, the narrow strip comes away from the main part of the paving. I like to keep the cut going just to give a nice clean cut finish. Now, once the cut is complete, you must wait for the blade to stop turning fully before you try to pick up the cut section or move any part of the paving. And there it is, a successful cut of 40 millimeters off the one meter edge of pavestone porcelain paving. So I've showed you how to cut a narrow strip off of the edge of porcelain paving using a table saw. I'm now gonna show you how to do exactly the same cut using both of these. On this how to cut pavestone porcelain paving video, I'm going to demonstrate how to cut a narrow 40 millimeter strip off the edge using a nine inch electric grinder that's fitted with a porcelain blade. First, mark the measurement to be cut off using a tape measure, a piece of chalk or a pencil, and a nice straight edge. For this demonstration, I'm going to clamp a piece of plywood to the pallet at both ends. The wood will be clamped tightly along the cut line. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to show you how to get a nice straight cut. And it's a great tip, and it will stop the grinder veering off the line. You'll see that I've got the whole of the slab on a pallet, and between the slab and the pallet, I've got an old piece of matting. Now this is there to absorb as much of the vibration as possible. It's important that you check the guide is in exactly the right location on the slab before you start to do the cut. Next, I'm going to lightly score the line that's to be cut. You can see that I'm using my left foot to hold the timber guide down in the middle. Once the score line has been done, the guide can be removed or, if you prefer, you can actually leave it in place throughout the whole cut. Okay, so the next stage is to do the all important tension relief cuts and they need to be done at each end of the slab. These cuts need to be around 50 to 75 millimeters long and they must go right through the thickness of the slab. You'll see that I've got one foot on the slab to hold it firmly in place, which will also help to keep the vibration to a minimum. So with both tension relief cuts complete, it's now time for me to do the full cut. It's important to make sure that you have both hands holding the grinder as any slight movement left or right may cause the cut to crack and you will have to restart the cut and possibly even use a new slab. Just slowly pass the grinder along the line and as you can see the blade is already starting to sink into the slab. I'm applying no pressure to the grinder and the blade is doing all the work. You can see during this pass that there is a lot of dust coming up from the saw and as we're using electricity we can't use any water to suppress this dust so it's essential that you wear the correct grade of dust mask. Now, as I start to cut this third pass, I know that the blade and the slab are both getting very hot now. So I must give them both time to cool down. At the end of this pass, I'll carefully put the grinder down and leave the whole cut for a few minutes until the blade and the slab have both cooled down.
Okay, everything's cooled down. So now I can continue with the cut. As this is a large slab, I like to take the blade out the cut line, say about halfway, adjust my feet to my body, and then move up so I actually do the cut in two stages. And what this does, this avoids the need for me to stretch over to reach the other end of the cut. Any excessive stretching can cause the blade to move left or right because you have less control of the grinder. This often causes the blade to snag in the cut and the slab may crack. Now, my experience tells me that this cut is nearly complete, apart from there's a small section at the start of the cut. And there it is, a successful cut taking 40 millimeters off the edge of pavestone porcelain paving. On this how to cut pavestone porcelain paving video, I'm going to demonstrate not only how, but that you can actually cut very thin slices off the edge by having a little patience and using the right equipment. I will show you how to do this cut using a 9 inch electric grinder that's fitted with a porcelain blade. The overall method for the cut is the same as all porcelain cutting, which is to score the line first. Next, the all important tension relief cuts must be done at each end of the slab. These cuts need to be around 50 to 75 millimeters long and they must go right through the thickness of the slab. As with all narrow cuts, a bridge saw, sometimes known as a table saw, is the best way to achieve a professional finish. But for a small project with only a handful of cuts to do, an electric grinder works fine, it just takes a little longer to do. An example of why you may need to do this type of cut is that you could have slightly mismeasured a cut and you need to take extra off to allow a consistent grouting gap across the patio. Remember the golden rule, measure twice and cut once. As this is a very thin slice that I'm cutting off, I find the best method is to pass the saw through the slab twice to about the halfway point. Then I'll move my body forward to about halfway across the slab and this allows me to pass the saw twice through the second half of the slab without any excessive stretching to reach the end of the cut. Excessive stretching with any handheld cutting equipment can cause the blade to snag and this will crack the thin slice. You will see that after just two passes of the grinder, the blade is already over halfway through the slab. And it's important with this cut to allow the saw and the blade to do all of the work. Avoid forcing the equipment through the slab as this may cause the cut to break. As we finish the second pass of the cut, I know that the blade and the slab are both getting really hot now. So I must give them time to cool down. And at the end of this pass, I will carefully put the grinder down and leave the cut for a few minutes until the blade and the slab have both cooled down. Okay, so everything has now cooled down and I can continue with the cut. This is the third pass and extra care is now needed with an extra tight grip of the grinder to avoid any movement sideways of the blade. You'll also see me move my feet and body upwards towards the middle of the slab to make sure that I'm not doing any excessive stretching to reach the end of the cut.
As you can see, there's a very small piece of slab that's just come away from the underneath of the cut. This can sometimes happen, and as we're going to be discarding the cut piece, it doesn't really matter. So I'm now on to the fourth and what will be the final pass of the slab. My experience tells me that this thin slice is going to come away from the main slab any time, so extra care is now needed to avoid damage in the slab. I'm keeping a really firm grip on the grinder now, as I do not want this cut to fail at this point. Sure enough, as I get near the end of the cut, you can just see that the thin slice comes away from the slab in one piece. And there it is, a successful cut of five millimeters off the edge of pavestone porcelain in pavement. On this how to cut pavestone porcelain paving video, I'm going to show how to cut a 40 millimeter strip off the 1.2 meter edge using a four and a half inch electric grinder that's fitted with a porcelain blade. This is a great tool for doing small intricate cuts around drain gullies, fence posts, manhole covers, but it also works fine to do this type of cut. The only downside to using this size grinder as it is half the size of the 9 inch grinder and three times smaller than the petrol cut off saw so it will take a lot longer to do any cuts. The overall method for the cut is the same as all porcelain cutting which is to score the line first. You will see I have the whole of the slab on a pallet and between the slab and the pallet is an old piece of matting. That's there to absorb as much of the vibration as possible. I'm now doing the all important tension relief cuts and they must be done at each end of the slab. These cuts need to be around 50 to 75 millimeters long and you must go right through the thickness of the slab. Throughout this how-to video you will see I keep moving my feet and body along the edge of the pallet as I do the cut. This is to avoid any excessive stretching. When you stretch to reach the cutting line, your grip on the grinder reduces as well as your stability, so there is the risk of the blade moving in the cut, which may cause the slab to crack. As with all narrow cuts, a bridge saw, sometimes known as a table saw, is the best way to achieve a professional finish. But for a small project with only a handful of cuts to do, an electric grinder works fine, it just takes a little longer to do. Now for the rest of the cut, just take your time and let the blade do all the work.
and remember to stop and allow the blade and the slab time to cool down. This is more important with a smaller blade as it is working much harder than other blades. This video will now be sped up as it's a long cut to demonstrate with a small grinder but the important things to remember during the cutting process wear the correct PPE allow the blade and the slab time to cool down between cuts reduce the amount of stretching to reach the end of the cut keep a tight grip on the grinder and take your time and allow the blade to do all the work This will be the final pass of the cut as I can now feel that the blade is going right through the slab. As I get near the end of the cut, you can see the cut piece comes away from the slab cleanly. And that's it a 40 millimeter strip cut from the long edge of a pavestone porcelain slab. For more installation hints and tips, visit the website pavestone.co.uk.